everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good morning and happy Friday to every single one of you. Now, I'm showing you the updates of what's going on as well as the data. I'm showing it is still coming and we still have something to think about right after Memorial Day. Wrong. Now, let's get into the data, everybody. Now, as of early this morning, there's no tropical outlook from National Hurricane Center for the next five days. And I expect this to change within the next five days. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you that meteorologists out there actually back up what I'm saying. Now, all this precipitation will start affecting Central America first, and I will give you the updates. And you can see here that the global models continue to suggest that a Central American gyre will form across Central America and adjacent Southeast Caribbean by Friday, and then gradually shift west northwest across central america until early next week now i expect this still get suppressed by this dust this sinking air and then it's gonna be able to breathe guys and we still have this coming towards us now the main thing right now is that abundant tropical moisture northward triggering widespread strong convection over central america heavy rainfall has begun this evening in portions of nicaragua guatemala honduras and el salvador extreme rainfall is possible across the pacific coast of Central America and also over southern Honduras and northeast Nicaragua. There is potential for flash flooding and mudslides, especially across mountainous terrain, so please be careful in those regions. And this is how it looks from early this morning. We have our tropical wave, we have our Central American gyre that always creates surface loads when it gets to thunderstorms and these thunderstorms are going over Central America, a lot of Panama, and we have our other portion right here that is moving west northwest and it will sustain there for a while by the yucatan peninsula the dust is going to move this a little suppress it to the south southwest some more that's what the ural sees that low pressure forming on the pacific side of the bay but at the same time this is going to raise right back up because all the streamlined winds all the currents are still pushing to the north all this moisture is still going to go to the north and this is going to form right back up and your update on your potential velocity anomaly. As you can see, we still have all this sinking air from this dust layer that's still moving through. And you can see all these white portions right here. This is from the Ural trying to form that surface low that you've been seeing. As well as right here, right before the first, there's a little bit of lift coming into our section. We are 120 west, 60 west, east coast, all the way to zero for the MDR. But as we go into the first and second, we have a lot of lift, a lot of potential velocity anomaly coming into our section. Now, we do have a storm coming to the U.S., but this is for our tropics. This is going to be on the Western Caribbean. It is going to be forming close and coming quick. So please take heed to my warning. I'm going to show you all the data just like I showed you the other day when I showed you that all the data shows that this storm will go away and the models will catch up. And the models did eventually catch up. I'm going to show you the data of what's going to be coming in the upcoming models, and they will catch up as well. We have something coming, everybody. Matter of fact, in five days, as we look at our cyclonic vorticity, we will have some systems up into the U.S., and this is by the 26th. But as you keep going, you will see there will be a surface low, a upper level low that will strengthen in the south. And this will create a trough down here that will steer this storm to the east, northeast. At the same time, I expect this to be a little bit further west. And instead of this storm going over here towards the Bahamas, I expect it to still get right into the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. And as you keep on going, you can see with the potential vorticity that it does get a lot of lift in our area, not only in our country, but right here in the Caribbean. And we get our two potential velocity anomalies do grow. The one over here that the Ural has been seeing is going to be something rather weak going to southern half of Mexico. And it will bring a lot of precipitation, just like National Hurricane just said. But this will form back up. Our dust is going to be gone. Our wind shear is pretty much is going to be gone. And we're going to have a lot of chances for vorticity in this section. Now, on this run, it's showing it going to the east, northeast, and swinging back into Florida. And if you remember, this is the data I showed you days ago that this possibility can happen but this isn't the way it's going to go i believe that this is going to sneak right on in to the west side of florida into the gulf of mexico and still make that curve 
And you can also see this update with the Euro as well. I'll show you many things that the Euro does see as well with this. You can see that as you go into the end of May, the beginning of June, that we are getting our lift coming in, a lot of potential velocity anomaly right after this sinking air passes. And it's not all the way to the 10th of June. It is going to be June 2nd, June 4th in those days. Now, as you look at your global tropics for the next 10 days, the euro does see that low pressure forming over here, but that's all the euro can see. When you go to the KMA, the Korean, it actually intensifies it and shows that it could be something even stronger. But when you go by the GFS model, not only does it agree on that, it also agrees on this forming over here in the Caribbean. And the one you see this morning is like the data I showed you a while back. If you go back to the 18th and look at that run, you can see the chances for the cyclone to swing all the way around and come back towards Florida and the southeast. That's what y'all seen this morning. And the data I'm showing is that what we'll update later is that this will come this way northward into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And you can see this run this morning on a zero Z. You have your upper level low over on the eastern Pacific and you have your surface low by the first forming up. And then so far it's showing it going to the east northeast. And that's because of the currents that we have going that direction. But like I said, there is an upper level low that be swinging in creating this trough, creating these currents going to the east northeast. And I believe this trough will be further to the west and that would swing it into the Gulf. And you can see when you look at the NASA satellite that all this dust coming through the Caribbean is keeping all this precipitation suppressed to the west southwest. But as I will show you with the currents that it's not going to go south, it's not going to go southwest. This is going to continue to come back to the north. And that's the way it's going to be, guys. This is going to be coming north. You will see National Hurricane Center update that. Now, as we go towards the 25th, all this dust starts to leave out. All the sinking air starts to leave. Then we're going to start getting our convection. We're going to start getting our rising air. And all this precipitation is going to start coming back. And we're going to start getting our formation in the Western Caribbean. And this is going to move north. Now, this is only till the 29th. So I still stand by what I said the last few videos. Don't worry about it. Enjoy your Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to everybody that is enjoying that and showing respect to everybody that has given us our freedom. But I will keep you updated, so make sure you subscribe, because this is coming. And as you look at our currents for the Caribbean, you can see that it's all going from the southwest to the northwest, just like National Hurricane Center. It will be going to the north-northwest. It will get suppressed a little more and start going to the southwest and get weakened over this land, but it will come back. As you look at these currents, you will see that they are staying in that direction. It will keep pushing to the north, northwest, or as soon as this dry dust gets out of here. And you can also see that all this warm water does come right on in from the Caribbean Sea. It gets right into our Gulf of Mexico, swings around, and goes by the Gulf Stream around Florida. And that's why it's showing it strengthening up because we are well above average temperatures in our Gulf of Mexico. Matter of fact, just like I showed you the other day, meteorologists are showing that we are just as warm, if not a little bit warmer, as 2005. And you can see this on real-time ocean forecast. And this is our temperatures of what's going to happen. And you can see how everything is a lot warmer in all these reds, extremely warmer in these browns. And this is today. And as you keep going towards the end of the month, you can see it does warm right back up to extremely getting warm in the Gulf, as well as the Caribbean. So this is going to have a lot of energy. It is going to have the flow pointing in that direction. And it's going to have a lot of very warm temperatures to give it food to rapid intensify. Now, I put this article in the links in the description as well. This is by thestreet.com. And they're letting you know that for 2022 hurricane season, the loop current, a fueler for monster storms, is looking a lot like it did in 2005 when we had Katrina. And in 2005, this is our temperature anomaly that we had in our Gulf and our Western Caribbean. And if you look at the temperature anomaly we have this year, it is a lot warmer. This will create some serious hurricanes, major hurricanes, in the beginning of this season. And I believe our first one is coming from June 1st through June 5th.
But there's a lot of good information here, and it is information that you will get from meteorologists as well. So I advise you, please go read this story. Not only that, give you an update on a meteorologist at AccuWeather, that it is showing that there's still a chance for the tropical development for May going into June in this region. So just to update you, normally in June, this is where our tropical systems can form. And being above average temperatures and something forming just close to home, it will form quick, it will strengthen quick, and it will come towards us quick. So stay prepared, be alert, Listen to what I'm telling you guys. This is happening. This is coming. Now, I know that this programmer said that don't worry about this. This ain't coming. I'm telling you to worry about this. This is coming. Just because that dry dust and the wind shear killed the models before, I'm showing that it, like I said the other day, it sees something down the road. And down the road is at the very beginning of June. And just like I've been keeping y'all updated on the CMEs, the potential coronal mass ejections, and creates a lot of problems for our storms. It even fueled Hurricane Irma, just like I showed y'all, and strengthened it up. We did have two coronal holes coming back to back facing towards us. That's why I stated alert on this. Because if it could have been something strong, and it could have been strong for multiple days, because we had multiple holes facing towards us, it would help this strengthen up even earlier. But so far, the update is that it came in not too strong, but not too weak as neither. We've been having it today, and we had it yesterday as well. Now, this will create problems for the north polar regions. It's not strong enough to come down towards us like it did for Hurricane Irma. But that's why I like to stay updated on this as well, because this does create problems with our tropical systems. Also, this link will be in the description for you by Weather Nation. Let you know, to update you, for those that did not see, that the CME that came right before Hurricane Irma came into our Caribbean, is why Hurricane Irma strengthened so badly and did the devastation that it did. We had a CME, so many solar flares coming off the sun, creating a lot of solar wind, and then it, it just and it intensified this storm and made it what it was. So please, go read this as well. Keep yourself educated and updated. That way you know why I'm showing you these potential CMEs. Now, just like how you see here with the Euro, we have this low pressure to sink in air forming over here. And that is creating all that shear that you see from National Hurricane Center. Just shredding anything that came in. But as you keep moving forward, you will see as you go towards the 25th, all the way to the end of the month, that this high pressure will move to the east. Now, not only is that allowing that surface low forming on the Pacific side, it will form over here as well because the other wave that I showed you is breaking into two parts. Like I said a long time ago, we have two. It will stay here. And then when this moves away, it will strengthen in these very warm waters. Now you can see with your streamlined winds, which guides and directs and gives us all this shear as well, that we have all these fierce winds still coming from the west to the east called the westerlies. And this will create all the shear that we're still having. And we still will have that trough come down even deeper as we go into the 23rd. And this will suppress the low pressure even further to the south. But with the current, it's still going to push this back north after this leaves and you can see as we follow through just with the model data that as it goes we start getting winds from the southwest going to the northeast so this will create a little bit different but there's a surface low that forms up and as this surface low starts building back up out of yucatan we get the surface low over to the u.s now this surface low will create a trough now this trough right here is what's going to create some more shear but at the same time it's going to steer According to this model run, which I'm showing you with the data, this is the old, according to the data, this will be further to the west. But according to this one, it will still push it to the east, northeast. You see the direction of the, the winds, the streamlines. And as it pushes that system on this model run, it continues to the east, northeast. Then it goes from the south to the north. That's why you see in that model run that this is going from the south to the north after it goes from the south to the northeast then it goes from the southeast to the northwest it gets a very big divot gets very much into the positive and it pushes it more to the west it has to follow these streamlines when it flows around but i do believe that this will be further to the west and this curve that you see happening right here will be happening around here with a trough right here and you can see with your wind shear that we have all this 
Very phenomenal win shear. That's why I told you don't worry about your Memorial Day. Memorial Day is going to be a great weekend. But after that, it's going to pick up and it's going to pick up fast. So as we go towards the end of the month, you can see all this shear. And then the beginning of June, say bye-bye to all that shear. It leaves, guys. All this shear is going to be leaving. So whatever strengthens up in the front of the Caribbean into the Gulf will have not too many problems as far as going north into our Gulf of Mexico, according to our streamlines. And according to the temperatures, it will intensify quickly. And as you look at your vorticity and your irritational winds, you can see right at the 29th, right at the end of the month, that we still have this big elongated vorticity. Now this will split into the two. At the same time, you can see the winds that are steering it and it is streaming it south, southwest. That's why you see that pressure continue to get pushed back. But after it separates in the beginning of the month, bam, it's going to separate into two surface lows. We're still going to have the one that the Euro sees. We're still going to have the one that the GFS sees. And this is by the first. And you can see the direction is pushing it. It's pushing it west, northwest. There is some headed to the north, but it's still on a westerly track. This will not be going to the east like you see in the model runs now. Now, as you keep on going on this one, you'll see that it does change and it goes to the east, northeast, because the streamline is carrying it. That's what gives you your direction. At the same time, you can see it is going to the west, northwest, and it's trying its hardest the whole time to keep going to the west. And when you look at your chances for your surface low, the average, the mean, you can see how you don't have any chances for any surface low. This is all the way till tomorrow. We have all this sinking air over here. That's why the low pressure is over here by the Bay of Campeche and it goes into the Pacific. But as we keep on going towards the first, you can see it does raise up and it does get chances for rising air to get some convection on this side, not over here by Florida. It will build up towards the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, whether that surface low that forms later and that trough that it does create with the streamline winds, We'll direct it whether it either goes into all this lift on the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico, western Florida, or whether it goes to the eastern side of Florida, the western side of the southeast Atlantic. And so far, that's where the strength builds. All the lift is going to be on the east side of the Gulf of Mexico. And when you look at your ensemble members according to the euro, you can see that by the 26th that it has a very good chance for it to get a surface low right here. But as you keep on going forward according to the euro, you'll see that it does get the chance to get the surface low as well towards the end of the month, towards the beginning of June to form up by the eastern side of the Gulf. And you can also see when you see chances for a tropical depression. Yes, it does get its tropical depression over there according to the euro. But as we go towards the end of the month and the beginning of June, it raises up more chances for a tropical depression. We get a lot of lift, a lot of convection in this region. Matter of fact, when you look at the Euro SpaghettiOs, that shows you the chances for cyclone formations. You can see you get your chances very strong for that one to form, and it will form, but there will be two. And then it gets the chances for it to start forming right around the 30th towards the beginning of June to end of May. And we still have our chances for something to form. And this is by the Euro, guys, that it will be coming in that direction. And just to show you the trend, this is the GFS with your ensemble members and probabilities. You can see as you go to the 25th, it all gets suppressed and pushed down here into the Pacific side. But all the current is still pushing north. So as you keep on going, after the dry air leaves, the dust is gone, we get all that lift, all that convection, and it gets a better chance to form over in this region by the end of May. And towards the beginning of June, it gets very strong for your chances for something to form in this region. Very strong. very A lot stronger than that right there. The strongest so far that we've seen. This will be coming. Please listen to me. Don't listen to a programmer trying to be a weatherman. Listen to a weatherman that's getting backed up by meteorologists. This will be forming and it will be coming our way. And you can see that these water temperatures really raise up and make a difference as we go towards the end of May and the very beginning of June. As we look at SpaghettiOs from the GEFS, as we go towards the end of May, we have potential for two. Then as we go towards the beginning of June, there's a potential chance for that to move northward. Because as you look at your precipital water, you can see it all gets suppressed down here by Central America. 
But as we go towards the end of May, that wind shear leaves, the streamlines and the currents push to the north from the south, and all this precipitation is going to be bottling up and coming into the Gulf on the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see it does come into the Gulf on the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico, not the eastern side of Florida. This will push further west in these models as it catches up with the data once again. And as we look at our 30 perturbed members, there's not even no point showing you all these fear factors and all these of what the models might come into. This is your controlled member. This is the only one you need to look at. And as you go towards the 27th, it starts forming up a surface low. Then as you go towards the beginning of June, right there, you get your upper level low coming right back on the 30th. And it starts going right into the Gulf of Mexico on the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. And this is your controlled member. This is a more than likely outcome out of everything that is showing of what could happen. There's only one worth watching. Also, remember, every month we do feed the homeless, the elderly, whoever is hungry. We still feed them. I'm still passing out Bibles to them. Matter of fact, we're doing great, guys. We have over $1,500 saved up to help feed these people. We have three times as much money as we had last month. So if God bless every single one of you that are involved. If you do want to get involved in this, all the links are in the description to show support. And remember, if it's for food, Always write it for food so it gets pushed into that account and we can raise that up even more. Thank you all for being involved. May God bless you and your families. You have a great heart. And you can always go to Spectrum if you need some entertainment, you need some fun. Please go to Spectrum. If you want some good information for this hurricane season, I have put all the family, the real YouTube family has been here for five years or more for you guys. Helping you, keeping you safe. We all love you. Show support. And originally, we got the first one, of course. We have Dr. Levi. He is a genius. Matter of fact, he is Tropical Tidbits. When y'all use Tropical Tidbits, this is the man that you use, all right? Then we have Nate. And we have David. They are a great analyst. If you ever seen somebody tell you what's coming, they pull out the weather information and show you the analytical side of it. They don't just model run through it. They tell you what's going to happen, and the models do catch up later. Just like I'll show you data. They are real-time data analysts. Go check them out. Plus, we have Mike Morales. He has two channels. He's a very good man. He always tells you about the weather manipulation. And you don't just talk about it. He shows you the proof, video proof, guys. Please go check Mike out. YouTube stopped him from being monetized a long time ago. It's a shame. He's a great guy. Please go show support to him as well. As well as Ponder. I raised him up a long time ago. Those that have been here for a while do know. He bit me. It's okay. I love you, bro. I still have the emails to prove it. I wish you would come to the truth and let everybody know the truth. But I still support you on my channel, man. God bless you. And there's others as well. But these are the ones that you want to stay up to date for hurricane season. Believe me. You will feel better and you will feel safer. And of course, as National Hurricane Center updates their probability page or five-day outlook, if something pops up, I will let you know about it. I expect them to start saying something within five days because that's when it's really going to start ramping up. That's when our dust is still going to be leaving. And believe me when I tell you, when this models catch up with this data, it's going to change just like it changed before. This will change and show everything I'm telling you. So God bless all of you. I, I really hope that you heed my warning. This model run is not what's going to happen. What we're going to happen is a little further to the west and it's going to be worse. It's going to be in warmer waters and it's going to be less year. A word from God. Amen. Proverbs 3. And if you've never been here before, you should listen to God. Don't listen to man. Man will lie and steer you wrong. God loves you. He will always be there for you. He's very patient. <laughs> Amen. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. 
Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yes, thou shalt be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go, and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely, by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Amen. Please share this information. Let others know what is coming. My information is backed up by real meteorologists. Please heed my warning. This is coming. It's already on his way. But whether you believe me or not, God bless every single one of you and keep your family safe this hurricane season. And above all things, <laughs> all glory, all honor, all power does belong to Yahweh, God of Jacob our Father in heaven. And he loves you and he's waiting to hear from you. But he won't wait forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a wonderful Friday. Get out and enjoy the beautiful weather, everybody. And those in the storms, God bless you and keep you safe.